Hey, welcome to Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot. We're going to talk a little bit about this project. I call him Rolly. Say hello, Rolly. All right, get get out of the, get out of the scene. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about Rolly. So Rolly is pretty much all 3D printed. There's a few parts like the motor and uh, the servo and stuff on the other insert that aren't 3D printed, obviously, but uh, these green parts are 3D printed. There's different slide-ins for different camera mounts. So this is a larger mount that has a hole for a quarter 20 bolt. You can have that mount in there. Uh, for something a little heavier like a DSLR. I have used a DSLR on here. Uh, you just have to be careful because the motor is pretty small. We'll go over where to get the motor in a bit. But that's the first 3D printed part, essentially. The little slide in. There's another one right here. This one's for a servo. So it uses a small micro servo in the top to move around the mount like you saw in the intro. That part is also 3D printed. The bolts are quarter 20. We'll go over that in a bit. 3D printed knobs. These knobs help the arms stay put when you tighten them down. So these bushings are also 3D printed. These are just bushings that go around 608ZZ bearings. Glue those in place. Attach the arms uh, with another quarter 20 bolt. Faceplate. I perforated the faceplate so the electronics in the back uh, can get ventilation. Uh, the drive wheel itself is also 3D printed, and the body itself is 3D printed. So I'll put a package of all this out on Thingiverse so you can download them and print them off if you'd like. The actual parts of this build that aren't 3D printed are just quarter 20 bolts. So well, there's a couple 1 inch quarter 20 bolts, there's a couple 3 quarter inch quarter 20s. So I modeled it with quarter 20 bolts because quarter 20 is what accepts um, on cameras so the bottom of your camera will be a quarter 20 um, the bottom of the gopro camera mounts will be a quarter 20 just makes life a lot easier to use the same size for every part of the build if you decide to build it uh, print it out and put it together one of the crucial parts you're going to need is a rope i modeled it up to use four millimeter diameter rope uh, similar to 550 paracord so 550 paracord comes in about 50 foot lengths from your local big box store. This is actually a 100 foot length from 250 foot lengths. So what I did is the internal uh, strands, I tied those together and then put shrink wrap around it, heat shrink. It works okay. My thing with paracord is that it's very smooth outer braid and the drive wheel can't really grasp it that well. So I've switched to this. This is just 100 foot of... Like, I think it's like one eighth size uh, clothesline rope, and you can get this for like seven dollars at a big box store as well. Um, this seems to work really well because the drive wheel can grip it quite well. Um, I've also modeled up these, they're just, um, I don't even know what you call it basically a rope cleat. You put it around uh, the tree or the pole or whatever you're doing, and then you can tighten that up and then run it through the cleat. To hold it down similar like you would on a boat seems to be working pretty well uh, those will be included as stls as well so the other parts you're going to need for this build are a couple 608 uh, zz bearings one recesses in this uh, servo mount and you're going to need a rubber band for that as well there's two pulleys in here that go on to gears that you're going to have to print out um i don't know if this is the best solution as you can see there's quite a little bit of wobble uh, when it insets into that bearing but what I do like about it is it does allow you to control on the channel output of your transmitter it's pretty nice uh, to be able to pan the camera I would not advise using this mount for anything very large right I wouldn't put a DSLR on here the only thing holding it in is a friction or glued in bond with the outer race of the bearing and the bottom of this printed mount so keep that in mind use the actual heavy duty mount if you're going to use anything heavier than a gopro so the other parts of this build are a receiver for your transmitter 
Um, you need to have an RC transmitter if you don't have one. Uh, fly, I use FlySky protocol because it's very cheap. It's affordable. The receiver and controller combo for mine specifically, and that was like 60 bucks for the receiver and the transmitter now. They make the FlySky i6 or something, I think, 6S or something like that. That's even cheaper. It's like $40. So you can find transmitters for relatively cheap. Um, that receiver is mounted onto the faceplate in the perforated holes. And then it's just using a very cheap ESE from eBay that goes from 4 to 8 volts for a brushed motor. You need to have a brushed motor ESE on this because we're actually using a brushed motor out of a RC car at your local big box store. So you can find these uh, sharper image. It's called the Tumbler. Uh, it's kind of a gimmicky little car. But they have two of these motors in them, and they're $9, $10 at the big box store. So you just take that apart. You get two geared DC motors uh, from one vehicle, so it's 10 bucks. You can't even ship those in, really. Uh, the thing is, is it's a plastic gearbox, so you have to be cognizant of that. And I wouldn't push it uh, very high in the voltage, so that ESC pumping out up to 8 volts seems to work really well. Uh, it's pretty well geared. You don't want to push it really too hard. Obviously, uh, it's a cheaper DC motor, so you know it is what it is. I will include files to use an economy gear motor from Servo City. I bought a couple of those. The problem with that is you need a high voltage ESE um, because the motors are ranked or rated up to about 18 volts. So when you're only pushing about 8 volts in it, they don't go that fast. Um, you can run this off of a separate battery pack so like a lithium ion battery pack if the voltage is high enough i attempted to run it off a of usb i got it to work once or twice off of a battery pack but there just doesn't seem to be the amps there enough to sustain it and keep it going for uh consistently if you have a higher quality battery pack there's a good chance it would work so something that has uh the juice to run it probably be good to go so instead of running it off of just a, a rechargeable battery pack that you would do like a portable battery pack for your cell phone, I'm running it off of a 2S LiPo. So this is 7.4 volts, right? And it's 2,700 milliamp hours. Um, lithium polymer batteries, if you don't know much about them, it's a little bit more difficult to get into. If you already do RC cars or something, you'll already have LiPo batteries lying around. You need to balance charge these. You have to really do your homework on how you're going to store them. Um, like I store them in a fireproof box. Uh, you just really want to be cognizant of these batteries because they are kind of volatile. So you need a separate charger for them if you don't have one. Uh, it's a little bit more investment, but you get value to performance ratio is much higher with lithium polymer. So I'm running it off of a LiPo with an XT60 connector right now. And it seems to be working just fine. That ESE pumps out the right voltage to that motor and it seems to be fine. So I have used this with the body insert for the DSLR and I have put a DSLR on it. It seems to work pretty well. Be cognizant of how much you push these arms up onto the rope because this little motor can't really handle that torque. If you went to the economy geared motor, something with a metal gear box, you might not have that torque issue, but you just want to be cognizant that you're not going to blow up that motor that's moving it back and forth. Interestingly enough, the way that it's balanced out, if you don't even have the arms on, it'll still stay on the rope. It'll just do this right as it goes. It won't be as balanced as when you have the arms up. So for storage, I usually put arms down. Then I just tighten these up, and they stay down. So for the ESE, I created an ESC mount that you can print. There's some uh, modeled holes there for M3 bolts. So all the bolts on this are either M3 or the bolts that mounted for the motor on the tumbler. So you can use the same bolts that came out of the car as you would uh, when you put it onto here. Uh, wiring is pretty simple. You can't do po positive, negative there on the DC. Uh, I did white to positive, blue to uh, negative to from the ESC and it seems to be working just fine left is left and right is right on uh, mode 2 on my transmitter and we're all good to go the ESC has a on off switch which is pretty handy I like that 
and uh, overall it seems to be working really well. So one last thing is when I hit, was running the GoPro mount, I actually have this kind of tripod mount for the GoPro. I was running my GoPro with a two axis battery powered gimbal so that got rid of some of this and this. It's not a three axis so it couldn't do I guess a yaw it would be at that point. Um, so you still get a little bit of shake but if you had like a three axis gimbal this would be really good for for doing any of that so um yeah overall pretty happy with the project if you got any uh suggestions or anything leave them down in the comments or download it on thingiverse make your own modifications because that's what the internet is for i suppose um yeah hopefully you enjoyed it if you did maybe leave a like if you really enjoyed it why not subscribe love to have you here love to see your face again that'd be great the other thing is, keep your amps up and you're feeling the